Well, good morning. You join us at the start of a session on my syndicate down in Kent. It's a beautiful old lake, about 10 or 12 acres in size, and it's got some stunning fish up to just over 35 pounds. Now, I got here first light this morning. I've had a good look around, and it was pretty evident that there was a lot of fish held up in the central body of the lake in a big weed bed. So now the trick is going to be trying to find three clear spots that we can present the rods on. We haven't done it yet, but I'm going to persevere and see if I can do that now. Well, after leading about for about 35 or 40 minutes, I'd soon found three really nice spots to present in the weed. Now, they weren't completely free of the weed, so the method of choice was going to be a pop-up. This meant that no matter what was lying underneath the thicker weed, I was still going to be presenting the bait perfectly. Now I'd got two rods ready, clipped up and ready to cast, and I'd hooked on a little bag with three link boilies and a little foam nugget in, just so that I had a sighter to put a pouch of bait over each rod. I was just about to start getting the third rod ready when the first rod I put out absolutely screamed off. Well, that didn't take long at all. We've, uh, we've only got two rods out, one up short on the right, and we found a lovely little hole in the weed on this left hand rod and it's probably not been out there no more than 20 minutes and it's off so it just goes to show you even though it's thick with weed out there we found a nice little hole to present this pop-up in and it's ramped off so hopefully we can get it in and and show you feels like quite a nice fish as well oh god i just can't seem to get it out into the open water it's come really hard round to our left I'm just trying to ease it back up this margin. No need to panic, just keep it moving. And it should be ours. Oh, that's it, we're out. See it there? Big clump of weed on its back. All right, well, I think we're slowly winning the battle now. Oh, maybe not. Happy. One last bid for freedom. Well, are you finally, finally gonna be ours? I can see that little yellow pop up dangling in his mouth. Come on, get in there. Yes. Result. Brilliant. What a result. Let's have a little look and see what we got, just slapping that off. Oh yeah, what a start. That looks like a real cracking mirror. Just goes to show you, get that spot right in the weed, get the presentation right, and you can have a quick bite. And that is a right result to start the session. Well, what a result. 26 pound, four ounces, and one I've not seen before. It certainly looks good for more, so let's slip this one back and get that rod straight back out. Brilliant.
I was beginning to think that lovely mirror we had this morning was going to be the only bite of the day. There's been fish in that weed bed all day and I've been sitting there thinking why haven't I had another bite? But the patience has paid off. A little bit more link out there this afternoon and this has ramped off and I'm well happy with this one going into tonight. Those little pop-up rigs doing me proud today, nicely balanced and it's looking good for the night ahead. Well, like is quite often the case, you wait all day for one and then another one comes along straight away. We've only just slipped that fish back. This is the only other rod I'd redone for the night. In no hurry to get that rod back out. Just put the kettle on and this one's gone. What a lovely way to finish off the evening. Well, I think she is nearly ours. Big gulp of air there. Looks like the first common of the trip. Nice long dark one. And I think he's nearly ours. Yes, here he comes. Come on then, girl. You are mine. Yes. Lovely. That will do very nicely. Well, there you go, fish number three. And this time it's a lovely old common. Again on the pop-ups, and there's plenty more fish out in that weed bed. So let's get that rod back out. After that fish last night, I was sure there was going to be some action in the night, but there wasn't. I got up at first light, made myself a brew, and I was just seeing if I could see the deer on the far bank, and the middle rod's gone into meltdown. And we've had this cracking 26-4 common. What a fish, let's hope the day continues in the same vein. So as I've said, pop-ups have been a key element to my approach on this session, and I'm using three different pop-ups. The first one is a link pop-up matching the hatch. The second one is a high visual pop-up, looking for those carp that might be just seeking out one individual bait. And the third one is a combination of the two. It's a link flavoured boilie, but this time in the fluoro white. That way I've got all three bases covered. And much like when you're zig fishing, when you're changing the depths and colours, you can do this with the pop-ups and identify which one's working on the day, because the smallest things can make a difference. Light levels, colour of the water, and even weather conditions. So if you can identify which colour's working on the day and change all three rods over to that, you are going to maximise that session and put everything in your favour. So food source pop-ups, what are they? Well, they're a dedicated range of pop-ups to match the freezer baits in the range, such as Cell, Essential Cell, and what we're using today, the new Link. This enables you to create a match the hatch situation so you can fish those critically balanced pop-ups perfectly amongst your matching freebies. I'm also using pop-ups from the high visual range. These combine higher track flavors and super bright colors. These can be fantastic when fished over bait or also used as a higher track single when casting at showing fish or single hook bait fishing in the winter months. So as I've said, you can also combine the two, matching both the food source you're putting out there and fishing a high visual pop-up. These can be found in the pink and white fluoro range, available in both 14 mil and mini micro. The mini micros can be perfect for toppers or little snowmans. So why fish a pop-up? Well, for me, if we look at our situation today, it's very thick with weed. So if I wasn't using a critically balanced pop-up, my presentation would be severely hampered. But they can also be fantastic when fishing over dying weed, deep silt, or any situation where I want my hook bait to be clear of the lake bed. Pop-ups can also be fantastic when fishing over particle or a big spread of boilies, or even a combination of the two. This can quite often get you a quicker bite, as it's the pop-up that the fish will see first when it comes in on your spot. But they're equally as good when fishing over little or no bait, 
whether that be in the summer months when they aren't feeding so hard or the winter months when things are really tough, that single pop-up presented perfectly, giving off loads of attraction, can quite often be the only thing the cart will take. Well, the fish have certainly made us wait today. It's been quite overcast and miserable for most of the day and the carp have still been in that weed milling about but no bites so I was beginning to worry so I've had a rechuck a couple of times which can uh, often be a good thing to do because although those pop-ups are giving you a perfect presentation you never know if there's a little bit of underlying weed or some obstructions out there that might be making it sit funny preventing you getting a bite so having a rechuck freshening it up, maybe a couple of pouches of bait can often stir you on a, a bite. But I think now that sun's come out for the last hour or so of the day, it's just kicked them into gear. And hopefully we can catch a few more. Oh, yeah, that's a nice fish. He's nearly ours. Come on now, last gas run. Oh, <laughs> not giving up easily not giving up easily. Here we go. Here we go, she's ours. Big gulp of air, come on. Oh, no, still not ready. Still not ready. Oh. This is it, there she is. Turn on the side, are you ours? Yes, you are. Beauty. Oh, superb. Oh yeah, it's a real nice mirror. Well, how about that for scaly perfection? Absolutely made up with this one. One I've never seen and one I'm very, very glad to catch. And best of all, we've still got a night, but I know those pop-up presentations are absolutely spot on, nailed again in the bottom lip, and yeah, he wasn't coming off. Absolutely brilliant. Now pop-up rigs can be as simple or as complicated as you wish to make them, and a lot of this can be down to personal preference. My personal favourite is my version of the D-Rig. I start by cutting a small section of 12 pound IQ and tying a whipping knot to a size 6 curve. I'll then trim the top tag because this isn't needed anymore. I then cut a section of 15 pound braid and tie a simple knotless knot to the size 6 curve. I'll then trim the tag end. The next step is to take a medium sinker. You'll thread this on and then position this exactly how high you want the pop-up to sit off the deck. Then taking a micro ring swivel, I'll thread that onto the bottom tack of the IQ and simply poke it back through the eye and blob it off until I've got the D exactly how I want it. I then tie a simple overhand knot at the desired length of the rig, thread on an anti-tangle sleeve and it's ready to go on a quick chain swivel. The next step is to thread on your pop-up. Now I do this using floss, I simply pull the boilie onto the swivel, tie two overhand knots and blob with a lighter. And now you're ready to add the putty to the medium sinker. This will control how fast or how slow the pop-up sinks. There'll be a little bit of trial and error in this, so just test it in the edge until you've got it absolutely bang on. So there you have it, my version of the D-Rig. It's extremely versatile, can be used with all size pop-ups, so why not give it a go? Well, yet again, going into the night last night, I was really confident. It looked really good for a bite as the hours of darkness approached, but exactly the same pattern formed. No bites whatsoever through the hours of darkness. I've woken up this morning and conditions couldn't be further than from yesterday morning. There's a much colder wind on the lake, certainly got a little bit of north in it. But looking at the weather app, it is due to warm up in the next hour or so. So we have got a chance to nick hopefully one more bite. Well, we hope anyway.
Well, just when we thought there was going to be no more action before the session ended, the left hand rod's ramped off as I'm just taking the bivy pegs out and it looks like we might end on a fish. Oh, she's nearly ready. Come on, let's end just how we started on a lovely carp. In you go. Oh, lovely. Oh, you made us work for that. Well, how about that? What a fantastic way to end what's been a really enjoyable session. We said if that sun come up, we might have a chance for one more. It's well and truly up now, burning my face, and we've been rewarded with this lovely character. And it just goes to show you cannot leave home without a selection of pop-ups. We could have come here, ignored that big weed bed and where all the fish were, gone safe down the other end and fished on the bottom. But we didn't, we persevered, we found some areas that we could present that pop-up perfectly and we've been rewarded with a selection of absolute bangers. What a fish. Let's get it back and I must get going. Right, you join me at the quarry in Chelmsford, Essex, and it's a lake that I've fished loads in the past, and I've come down here today, and I've got here at four o'clock, well, say half four in the morning, and with the weather forecast, high 20s, clear blue skies, the shallows is obviously your first port of call. The wind is blowing down there, but to be honest, I went down there, had a little look, and there was not really much going on. I did see a little bit of activity, but not enough for the amount of fish that's in this lake. So I came back up to the swim called the Pallets, one that I've got a, a lot of confidence in, one of my favourites from back in the day. And straight away there was a, a few fish topping and a lot of bubbling. And right where I know there's a lovely, lovely clear spot. You know, and when we all know location is the most important thing. The fish are here, I've seen them there, I saw the bubbling, I know they were feeding there. But then to have a really lovely spot to be able to present on, you know, it's about, it's about a rod length wide, about a rod length deep, just big enough. For, for three rods, you know, if I put one in the middle of the spot, one six foot either side of it, you know, I've got a really nice tight patch there. Obviously, I've got to get my bait in nice and tight, but yeah, I've, I've created a, a nice mix, probably a little bit different to, to the norm. You know, most people would uh, go in with mainly particles, but I've gone in with mainly boilies. I'm using the link and uh, I've put that through a crusher only once. I haven't got, made it really fine. There's loads of different size bits and pieces. I've put a jar of hemp in there, I've put a few, uh, response pellets in there, not many, just a few, and a little bit of the link, link liquid, and just a few 10 mils probably. I'm probably gonna put, I reckon, 40 spoms out there initially for the three rods, and uh, that's not for one fish. I'm not fishing for one fish at a time. I'm expecting the fish to come in the night and tomorrow morning, so I'll get that bait out there, set it, get the rods in over the top, hopefully draw in a pack of fish, and then hopefully, over the course of the night and tomorrow morning, get a few takes, and uh, yeah, we'll have to see how it goes.
with my spot of clipped up and plumbing meticulously done, it was just a case of getting that bait out there as accurately as possible onto the spot. So I took my time, allowed for the wind, cushioned that spot in there, nice, gentle, onto the clip and depositing that bait all over that gravel spot. All that remained was to get those three hook baits out onto the spot with the same accuracy that I had with the bait. One of the most common questions we get asked at Mainline is how do you and why do you air dry baits? And basically it's to keep the fresh baits in good condition. There are active ingredients inside and uh, if you leave them in the bag to condensate for the uh, ice crystals to soak into the bait, they will turn in a matter of course for a few days, three, four days, they'll start to, to the sugars and all the goodness in the bait will come to the surface, you'll see the white marks and then they'll start to turn. If you want to prevent that, depending how long you want them to stay fresh for, you know, there's two ways I go about it. If I'm fishing in the UK for a three day session or up to a week, then initially I take the bag, baits from the freezer, put them into an air dry bag and I shake off all the excess ice that's on the outside of the bait and get that off of them before they thaw out. Then I hang them on the washing line in the air dry bag and every now and again I just give the baits a bit of a, a move round, let the air circulate around them, that will dry off the surface and after 24 hours you know they will last like I say three days up to a week, you know probably a week out of the freezer and, and stay fresh. But if you want to sort of dry them for a longer period of time so they'll stay fresh indefinitely, you need a longer, a longer drying process. So in that situation, what I do is I lay out a big um, mozzie mesh in my garden. It has to be a nice sunny day. Again, I shake off the um, ice crystals first and I put the baits down onto the mozzie mesh and I just turn them throughout the course of the day. I use a broom just to push them around and uh, get the surface of the bait dry. In the evening, I bring them into the garage and lay them on the mozzie mesh on the garage floor. And the reason for that is you don't want the moisture like that happens overnight, the condensation, to get onto them, because again, that will trigger that active ingredients in the bait and make them turn. And you need to do it, I would say, three to four days. So three or four days in the sun, three or four days in the garage overnight, and uh, those baits go rock hard, you know, absolutely like bullets, and uh, they won't turn, you know, they will be, indefinitely preserved and people say oh well they're rock hard I don't want to fish them like that but what I do when I go to France I take my baits rock hard in in either air dry bags or in plastic boxes and then as and when I want to use them I put them into a bucket and I rehydrate them with with any liquid that you want tiger nut juice is a really good one lake water all of the associated liquids that that match the bait anything like that back into the bait they go soft and they're ready to use so top tips for storing freezer baits First of all, you need to keep them in the freezer. The fridge isn't good enough, they need to be frozen. Number two, when you take them out of the freezer, they need to come out of that plastic bag as soon as possible. Point three is to put the baits into an air dry bag, making sure you've got good air circulation and that will stop the moisture triggering those active ingredients. And finally, point four is when you're rehydrating those baits to bring them back to their original state. You know, you can use lake water, but the best thing of all is a little bit of lake water, a little bit of the activators for whatever chosen freezer bait you've done and rehydrating them brings them back to their former glory, all nice and soft and ready for the carp to eat.
the spot primed, baked and ready. It was just a case of getting those rods out. I waited for the wind to drop off and that allowed me to get all three bang on the money. At that point, I was fishing. It was just a case of getting the bivvy up. Obviously, we're not expecting any rain, but we're certainly due a few mosquitoes and hopefully a few carp. Well, I was just uh, suggesting a possible move down the other end. Have caught one already, but um, my friend Richard, he had five or six takes last night, and with me only having one at that point, I was thinking a move could be, be the best option. But this swim's always been a, a good morning swim, and uh, with one down there waiting, one on the end, you never know, there's still two rods on the spot, could get a couple more yet, so uh, let's get this in and see what it is. Oi. Come on, come on, mate. You look bigger than you felt. That looks like after. Oh, don't. Go on, here we go. Yep, got him. Well, here's one you just seen me land. Twenty-five pounds. I wouldn't mind betting he's an original. He looks really old, and he certainly reminds me of the, uh, the original fish from back in the day. Lovely fish. We were just about to show you the first one, but this one interrupted. Had to push the camera around out of the way, and uh, yeah, great result. We'll just slip this one back, and I'll show you the other one. There he goes. Well, here he is, first fish from this morning, 23 pound. And he was taken on the little shellfish and black pepper pop-up over the bed of a chopped link, a little bit of hemp and a little bit of response pellet. And I think today the course of action is get a bit more bait out there. I think the feeding spell's over for now and uh, reset those traps for tonight slash tomorrow morning. And I'm sure there'll be a couple more like this. So it's the second day and um, looking back, reflecting on what sort of happened overnight and this morning and two takes, yeah, it's not to be sniffed at. It's uh, a reasonable result, but I feel it's a very clean spot out there, very clean, perfect for uh, presenting a bit of feed over and free rods. And I just think that I could have possibly caught more. You know, it wasn't to do with the activity or anything like that. I just feel that maybe, maybe I might have been getting some rejections. And what I mean by that is, you know, these are pressured fish, they've um, been fished for with bright hook baits and by, by having a bright hook bait popped off the bottom, obviously it's one of the first ones that can be spotted, but it's also the most obvious one that's the hook bait. So uh, when I'm thinking like that, and is that a, a thing that I could be changing, I look to go towards a more natural coloured bait or a bait fished on the bottom. I don't really tend to fish straight bottom baits these days. I prefer to fish a wafter, so it's, it is on the bottom, sort of rest in there but by having that degree of buoyancy it's um, negating the weight of the hook and uh, in this case the quick change swivel that I'm using but yeah the bait is light the fish should be able to suck it up easy but it's not off the bottom so that's the real key you know it's not I'm trying to avoid rejection fish thinking that's obviously the hook bait I want them to notice it and uh, and that's why I've gone for a yellow one on one rod you know I've got the essential cell on one rod and the link caught wafter on the other. So that's a, that, that, the, the link is a complete match to what I'm feeding and if they're actively searching it out then there's no reason for them not to take that. But also, if you want them to find it quickly, you know, in a situation there's obviously a few fish out there, quite a bit of feed, and I don't want them to have to eat all of the bait before they find the hook bait. So by trying the yellow one, that will stand out, but it will still be on the bottom. So there's no, no reason in my mind for a carp to reject that. And what I will also do, the rod on the centre of the bait will go on onto the winner, you know. 
I'm, I'm baiting up heavy, I'm caught on that pink pop-up. So there might be nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna put that on the center of the spot and that's me uh, banker. But I'm gonna try these on the, on the left and the right rod. I'm gonna go in with uh, these two wafters and we'll see if it brings about a change. Right, right hand rod first. Straight down the side of that silver tree. There it goes. Oh. <laughs> All right, middle rod, straight at the green reeds. rod straight in that little black hole. Absolutely perfect. About six foot apart. The middle one's plumb in the center of the spot, and the two outside ones are just in from the edges. And it couldn't be any better. They're all over that bait. That is a job well done. Confidence is key in whatever you do, and it certainly applies to fishing. And uh, a lot of time, people are always asking me, they're saying things like, Oh, what bait should I use? And the truth is, use what you're confident in. You know, use it catch fish on it and then don't sway because then what you can do is concentrate on finding the fish, getting your rigs right, presenting your bait right, all of that is so, so important. But if you're worried about your bait and you're not confident, then you're not going to fish well. So use a good quality bait, catch your fish on it and then don't waver. In this session, like most of all of my UK fishing really, I'm always using freezer baits and always from mainline. And it's the dedicated freezer range that I use and there's, there's various ones in there that, that I've used over the years. You know, the Cell is an absolute classic. A much older one than that is the Activate that I've caught oh, so many fish on, I can't remember how many. Um, and then the, now there's the new Link. There's obviously other ones in the range. And um, a freezer bait is, is what I would always pick. You know, it's the best quality. It's highly digestible. It's an all round year food source. Um, when I'm targeting a venue, generally, generally speaking, I'm there for a sort of a campaign and I'm building on each session, learning where the fish go and gently applying the bait to where I see the fish are. And because of that, you know, I'm, I'm getting them tuned into looking for what I'm using and that builds, you know, the campaign builds over time. You get the food going in, you get them looking for that you as much as you're looking for them. And in the range, th these dedicated freezer range boilies, they're not just boilies. It doesn't begin and end with a round ball, you know, there's, there's so many different products that you can use to match this feed. You know, start first of all, hook bait wise, you know, you have different fluoros, match the hatch style, you have balanced wafters. There's, there's all sorts of different hook baits that you can get to match these food baits, but also there's the, the response pellets, you know, if you're fishing little crush bags or, or you just want to get a little bit of carpet feed out there, ground baits, there's all sorts, you know, you can, you can get dips, you can get glugs, but most importantly, it all matches that food, that signal that you're putting into the lake. So whatever the time of year, you can tweak your approach with all of these different products but using that same flavour signal, you know, that you've been baiting all year through the summer with your boilies, and you might go on to single hook baits, you might go on to stick mixes, and you might be a little bag of pellets, but you've still got that same flavour label, and you'll still get the fish looking for you. Well, that's it, we've come to the end of the session and unfortunately no more fish to report. You know, hindsight is a wonderful thing in carp fishing and yesterday after Richard came down and said that he'd had six down the shallows and with the weather, 
I probably should have moved down there, you know. But having just caught fish, just after he told me that, I thought maybe the fish are just getting on our bait and, and maybe I was going to catch some more. So I went with that. There was a few fish down this end, like we could see them in the weed beds on the other side, and uh, there was every potential for them to come out and have a little feed. But a flurry of tench killed that this morning, and like I say, no more fish to report. But caught two 20s, can't complain, and there's always next time. Right, I've just arrived at my syndicate Northwick and a bit of a rarity for me, I've got two nights ahead of me. Rather than having a quick scout around and dropping in for an overnighter, 48 wonderful hours to have a look and see if we can't catch a couple of these special carp that reside in here. Now, we are probably in the middle of what has been the hottest summer that I can certainly remember. But over the last few days, we've finally had a bit of rain, some torrential downpours at that. As just this morning, there was another massive one and I thought, could be a bit of a wet bit of fishing, but that sort of change in weather can really send the fish absolutely crazy. I'm gonna have a look, not too sure what to expect. They could be down rooting around, looking for signs of fizzing. They could be by the island, but having said that, the sun is now beaming down yet again, so they could be up on the surface. I don't wanna put all my eggs in one basket. I don't wanna to commit to a type of fishing before I even have a look at the lake. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a wander around with my mixer kit. If I see any fish, flick some mix up. If they start taking, see if we can nab a quick one. See you in a bit. Me running down the bank can only mean one thing. I've been firing some mixes out in one of the swims, funny enough, really close to the car park, and almost straight away they're taking. Floater kit, unhooking mat, let's go. This is one of the most exciting, but also most frustrating ways of getting a bite. There's probably 10 or 12 fish mincing around. They're not going absolutely crazy, but I'd say they're going enough to get a bite. When you're floater fishing, you're looking for that, um, that competition. It's a bit like when, you, when you're feeding over a lot of bait, when you're fishing with particle, you get a group of fish feeding. If you're fishing two rods on the spot, you tend to get a flurry of action. Often get two rods going at almost the same time where they're getting so preoccupied and they don't want to lose out on the next mouthful of food. I liken that to floater fishing. But at least when on the bottom, you can't see it happening. When it's like this, I mean, that is next to my mixer. But feeding is definitely the key to success. If you see a few on the surface and you, you just put like a single mixer out, realistically, you're not gonna catch it. But if you uh, keep some bait trickling in over a period of time, they tend to get more and more confident. And when they get to the stage where or well, we call it Pac-Manning, like Pac-Man eating all the little little tablets, whatever it was. You get carp going like that. And at the moment it feels it feels more a case of when I get the take, not if. There's one coming towards it now. But it's staying patient. The, the thing you want to keep doing is keep recasting where you see them pop up somewhere else. But I think they have a they have a little mouthful of food. And as they drift out around, it's just where they're chewing it and digesting it, and they come back in for another go. And the more you recast, 
I think you're actually lowering your chances of getting a bite. There's another, there's a group of mixers and a group of fish all around my hook bait. But because of the way the wind's drifting in a second, I'll put another, I'll put another spommer bait out to the right so the wind's bringing it. I don't want to bait up on top of them. Obviously, a spom landed on their heads in this situation when they're so close to the surface could, could spook them all. They're just starting to come back now and eat, eat a couple. One fish in particular looks pretty big. While they're just behind the spot though, I'm gonna put another pouch full out. Me hook bait. Oh no. I literally can't see my hook bait. Unless it's that one. Now I'm on a bit of weed. There it is. Patience is a virtue. Now, I don't want to be greedy. Don't care how big the fish is, not like that, but this is the time where you hope that hooking one doesn't spook the rest of them. You can carry on getting chances. It's quite weedy out there, so the fish has just gone into a bit of weed, so it's just a case of being patient, there is a boat should we need to, but ah, I've lost it. You were, darling. game. Come on, you're there, so are the ducks, this is a race against time here. The ducks have spooked my carp. It's not cricket Mr Duck, not cricket at all. close still they're still feeding which when you've had a bite and you've lost it you've got to take the positives right hopefully a little bit of revenge on mr carp they're one nil up at the minute i've got my little helper netting for me haven't i ems and when I say lift it, we're going to probably lift it together, aren't we? Should I try and stop him going in the way. Oh, look, he's angry. I actually managed to hook that fish off the side of the spot, so they're still actually taking out in the main water. Hopefully, Ems, we can net this one. We might get an even bigger one. What do you reckon? You ready, Ems? Yeah. Come in. There he is. Oh, it's a nice common. Whoa. Quite big, isn't he? Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Dave? No. Emily? Colin, Colin the Common. Colin Key. Colin Key? Yeah. Well, how about we concentrate on getting him in the net? Colin, Colin, Colin. Colin. I prefer Dave. I'm only fishing with a really light hook link, like eight pounds, so it is a long fight, but every time he goes to take line, you've just got to let him. Let's face it, we, we come here for the fight, we enjoy that. Yeah. Don't we, Ems? Yeah, we do. Ready? Yeah. Ready, Ems? Because he's not still. Can you hold on to that? you got cramp, have you? Yeah. There you go. My next lady's given up. She's got cramp. What can you do? Literally every time I touch the net, it turns around. This time, Emily. Surely. Yes! Which one are we doing? Which one are we doing? Oh, okay. La 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 la. <laughs> High five. Get in. Well, Emily, what are you saying about that? Perfect. That will do for me. Just under 29 pound. Do just want to make an important point, really. This time of year, when we have had such a hot summer, I normally like to get fish in the net and then quickly try and catch another one. But there could be, there could be oxygen issues, they're under a lot of stress, the water level's down. So rather than risk it, I've got it out of the water, weighed it, gonna get it straight back before I try and catch another one. But let's just enjoy this, eh? 2814 of as Emily says, perfect common. Dad? Yes, darling. <laughs> Your mum's going to go mad. Well, I've persevered for probably an hour longer than I should have done. They've slowly stopped taking the biscuits. Uh, the, either the confidence is gone, the weather's got too hot from they are just milling around not eating. So rather than flog a dead horse and keep having a go. I want to get the kit ready for tonight. I've seen so many fish here. I've seen fish rolling around as well as if they're perhaps on someone else's bait or there's a natural larder they're having a bit of a gorge on. That's enough for me. I've seen no signs elsewhere. I'm going to set up here for the first night. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully we can nick a couple off the bottom. Okay, now what I've done here might seem a bit like a, a bit of a faff around, but I know for a fact that over by that island, there's, there's always some real nice clean spots. I could cast to it from there. Uh, it's probably about 80 yards. It's not a particularly long way, but it would definitely take more than one attempt. So, believe it or not, I can walk to that island. There's, I can see there's a shallow gravel bar going all the way out to the zone that I expect there to be some clean areas and I saw some fish there earlier. So by doing this, by casting over, clipping my rig on, I can obviously ensure my rig's not got damaged. I can then walk it into position, simply lower it, and I can bait mega accurately. With this one, I'm kind of attempting to make this my, my big fish rig. I'm fishing a blatant pop-up with a handful of 18 mil link over the top. The big one has got, he seems to have a bit of a habit for falling to small traps of bait, and not, you know, not too much of it in, in this sort of situation in and around the island. Might as well try and put the odds in your favour, mightn't you? Let's see if it works.
After sorting the first rod out, tight to the island, it was just a case of getting the other two done, but it was nice and simple. I'm fishing relatively short range. Two rods fished over the same bait mix with some Power Plus particles, some 10 mil link chucked in as well, along with some pellet just to give the mix that extra bit of oily attraction. Once that's all done, time to watch the water for a bit, but as it's a school holidays, Emily's with me, so I'm gonna make sure to watch a couple of YouTube videos with her before we turn in for the night. Well, what did I tell you? By putting them 18 mil boilies on the island and trying to single out the bigger fish, I've managed to catch the smallest fish in the lake. It had to happen, I suppose. Who cares, it's a bite. Another one off the list, if you like, and it's a lovely, lovely little carp. Day ahead, I've been seeing a bit of fizzing coming up over me particle this morning. I've been getting a couple of liners, so I'm hopeful of a bite. I'll certainly be putting a few more mixers out as well. And uh, if, if not much else happens through the day and the island doing the only bite, I might tweak my tactics slightly and fish a couple over that way tonight. We'll just see how the day pans out. I'll tell you what, I'm doing a lot of running this session. I saw a fish show from right around the other side where I've sort of done the night come around to have a look and lo and behold in this little weed bed right in the margin uh, I saw a group of about 15 fish now the interesting thing was I followed a couple of them one was actually a big ghosty that I've caught before but he was very much looking down in the edge for food yesterday I did manage to nick a couple of bites off the surface but at no point were they really having it and there is every chance they are more looking for food on the bottom so the best thing about me particle mix not only is it great on a hard sort of hard area out in the lake to get the fish grubbing around. It is the perfect method for drawing them in and getting them to drop down right in the edge as well. Just a couple of little handfuls will do. I'm gonna try and set a couple of traps now, set a couple of hopefully fishing opportunities. And if I see them drop down and have a mouthful, I'll lower a rig on top. Fingers crossed again. Well, fishing in the summer is about keeping your options open and staying one step ahead of everyone else, if you can. Well, in this case, I've actually stayed one step ahead of the cameraman. You've just seen me baiting up some little spots in the back bay where I've seen some carp that look primed to lower a rig on maybe a bit later. I've come back round to my swim, lo and behold, it was like carp soup out on the surface. So I've put a single spommer mixers out, they've devoured the lot, flicked my hook bait out, my rig that was still ready from yesterday, and very quickly, I've got this absolutely perfect mirror carp on the bank. Cameraman didn't have a clue. Little tip for you though, don't just sit behind motionless rods, especially when it's this hot. It might not look hot where we're sat in the shadow, but the light is very dapper. We're under some trees. It's probably 25, 26 degrees. Sitting behind motionless rods is no fun. Get out and look for them. Well, what about that? I know you've only just seen me put a fish back and I'm sorry you didn't see the fight again. There were fish taking mixes. The cameraman had to nip back around the other side to get the rest of his kit. He begged me not to cast out, but I'm sorry. Big fish were taking mixes, so I flicked it out. I've had an absolutely epic battle. It weeded me up solid. I've had to go out in the boat for it. Big testament to a little size 10 mixer and eight pound cruiser line because that stuff just took some beating. But 34-12, it's my first ever 30 pounder off the top. I'm a little bit blown away. What a carp.
Mainline baits have been doing a range of particle for a couple of years now. And do you know what? The best thing about them is they come in a jar and they're ready to go as soon as you open up. You haven't got to prepare them yourself. They're absolutely fresh and ready to go. First up is hemp. It's probably the, the most classic particle of all time. And this is, if this is your first time of using it, that would probably be the one I would go for. Next up, it's the Spom range. As the name would suggest, ready to go straight into a Spom, cast it out. But basically, it's just giving you a few more different options. You've got lots and lots of different seeds in there, different colors, something just to give the fish a little bit more to think about. Next up is the Pulse range. Very similar to the Spom, but this one has got some bigger pulses in. It's got maples, it's got some maize in there as well. Again, just some bigger items that are really gonna give the fish something to think about when they're feeding in and around the zone. The great thing with particles is that they take on flavor really, really well, and you can kind of personalize it. But you know what? Mainline have already done that for you as well. Each of the jars of particle that I've just mentioned, they come ready prepared in either multi-stim, cell flavor, essential cell flavor, or the link. So if you've got a favorite boilie from the mainline range, you can simply buy the matching jar of particle, put your boilies in, and it's all ready to go. Now there is one more in the range as well, and that is the Tiger Nut. Probably one of my favorite. Carp absolutely love to crunch these things, and when they come ready prepared in multi-stim as well, you know they're gonna keep coming back for more. Now you might be watching this thinking, I'm catching quite a few carp just using boilies, why do I wanna have a little switch up to particle? Well, let me tell you, there comes a time where you, you might put your rig out, you might put 50 boilies around in it, a carp, two or three carp come in quickly, and they could very easily eat all of that bait and disappear, and you might not get that all important bite. When you start to feed particle, when you look at a handful of stuff, there's so many little bits that the carp have to eat that there's no quick feeding for them. They have to stay around for a long time. It keeps them preoccupied, keeps them properly in the zone, and it increases your chances of getting that all important pickup. Trust me, you need to give them a go. Fishing with particle, in many ways, is the same as fishing with any chosen bait that you normally do. With these, you simply open the tub, pour them into a bucket, they're ready to go, straight into your spawn to cast out onto the spot. I like fishing them in the margins as well, so little handfuls just drop round here and there. The beauty with all of these is that they're brilliant on their own. A single jar will do you absolutely fine, but depending on your budget, you can also mix them. If you wanted to try a jar of the Pulse with a load of hemp, some of the Tiger Nuts, you can do it all. The benefit of mixing different particles together is the different hook bait options that it gives you. Now, if you've got lots and lots of small pieces of bait out there and you decide to fish a big snowman hook bait, that is gonna stand out like a sore thumb. It's more important to try and mimic exactly what you're feeding. So for instance, if you've got some tiger nuts in there, you can fish a tiger nut on the hair. If you've got a bit of the pulse range, you've got some lovely bits of maize, maples, they're all brilliant hook baits that definitely trip up fish more often than they don't. And for this session, that's exactly what I've been doing. I've been mixing a few of the particles together. I've got a couple of big handfuls of hemp, I've got a couple of handfuls of the pulse mix, and then just a handful of tiger nuts in there as well. But to top it off, I like to add some link flavored response pellets. That's my choice. You can use the cell, the essential cell, whatever one you like. I'm going with the link along with some 10 mil boilies because like I say, I want the fish to come in on that buffet style menu where they're not quite sure what they want to pick up next. And amongst that, I'm probably going to take a couple of the tiger nuts and use them as hook baits. Fingers crossed something happens. thing with particles, they're great for fishing to a little spot where you want to keep the fish occupied. Now, the key to that is being mega accurate. So what I've done, I've actually wrapped my spot out. I found a little spot, it's not very big, there's weed all the way around it. And I want to hold the carp there for as long as possible, but I want to give them something to go down there for in the first place. So by putting this particle mix out, not only is it really, really attractive for pulling the fish down, but being such small items of food, once they get down there, the likelihood is that they're going to stay there for longer, giving me more chance of getting that all important bite. Now, I did fish this spot last night and I had a couple of liners. I saw some bubbling on it early this morning, but didn't get the bite. But funnily enough, this afternoon, I've seen two fish show right on top of it. So that tells me that whilst fish did come into the swim and did have a little feed, they didn't eat everything. So I'm not going to put loads of bait out tonight. I'm literally going with 10 or 11 little spoms just to give a nice little spread. And I'm going to fish a hook bait absolutely bang on top of it. So that's also wrapped to 10 wraps. So I know that everything is on a sixpence. 
hopefully that means they turn up again. There's a bit less bait out there. We get another lovely big carp. There we go, baiting up done. Just a matter of flicking the last rod out and the rest is down to the carp. Well, how about that for a chestnut bruiser? Beat me up a bit this morning, but I landed him over a bed of that particle that I showed you last night. And as I mentioned, when you're using different particles, you can take little bits out and use them as your own hook bait. That's exactly what I did. So when I put him back, I'm gonna show you how I prepare my tiger nuts as hook baits, and as just as important, what rig I used as well. Just over 25 pounds. Before I cast this rig back out into the lake, I just want to take you through exactly why I use it and more importantly, how you can use it and tie it yourself too. So to start with, I take about 10 inches of the dark matter tungsten impregnated coated braid. It's got a nice stiffness to it, so once you've set your rig up correctly when you cast out, it's always going to push the rig away from the lead system, ensuring that not only does it remain tangle free whilst it's in the air, but should a fish pick it up and reject your rig, it will represent and it will be ready to go for when the next Mr. Carp comes a lot. So to start with, I strip back about four inches of the coating and in the top of that, I tie a small hair. Then take a size four crank using a knotless knot of about, about nine turns is about right with this braid, making sure you leave yourself a hair long enough to take a couple of tiger nuts. I'm using tiger nuts, it is suitable for other bits of particle as well. And to be fair, it's just as suitable for a, for a balanced boilie too. This is what I like to use. If you take a close look here, I've only got a very small section of stripped braid near the hook. That just gives it that element of movement that it sometimes needs to ensure that it finds an important hook hold in that bottom lip. Moving up to the lead system, I cut it off and tie a figure of eight loop so that my rig is approximately six to seven inches long. Now that obviously depends on the type of bottom that you're fishing over and the type of situation you're faced with. You could go really, really short with it if you're fishing a really hard bottom, Equally, you could go a bit longer if you're fishing in a bit of sediment or over a little bit of low lime weed. Six to seven inches is a really good starting point though. So underneath here, there's a figure of eight loop knot. In fact, I'll just pull this anti-tangle sleeve back for you so you can see what happens. Under there, you've got a quick change size eight swivel and that just enables me to unclip that quickly when I've had a fish for argument's sake and get another rig on in the quickest time possible. Whilst that's off, I'll show you this end as well. It's a traditional lead clip system that I'm using, but rather than using it so that it's locked onto the swivel, so the fish feels the force of the lead and causes that bolt effect, I've actually changed it up a little bit, something I've been doing of late. I've taken my crimping tool and I've actually squeezed down this swivel so that as you can see, it doesn't lock into position. And what I believe happens is when a carp picks your rig up, they've become so used to this type of rig that they can, in certain situations, use the weight of that lead to actually eject the hook. We've seen it on the underwater filming, we know it happens, but as they move away with it, that simply follows it too, giving them nothing to do. They sort of move further and further backwards, and by that time, you're starting to get a bit of an indication, and trust me, this can put more fish on the bank. And then finally, I've got about 15 inches of dark matter anti-tangle tubing. Again, does two things. During flight, this could bounce back this just makes sure it doesn't tangle in the main line and it's always going to be presented when it hits the water. And finally, it just keeps that bit around the hook bait and around the baited area pinned to the bottom to ensure that when the lead hits the bottom on the lake bed and this pushes away, whatever bait you're using needs to be balanced correctly. Now, when I'm using tiger nuts, what I actually do, as you can see here, I've got a piece of cork in the middle. I take a six mil bait drill, I drill out about three quarters of each tiger nut and then quite simply, cut the cork to length, pull it all up tight. And what that will do, it won't actually make these float, it's totally negating the weight of the hook, 
so that this will act on the bottom exactly the same as all the other tiger nuts in your loose feed. But like I said, what it will do is ensure that it sinks that little bit slower and it will push away like so, ready for Mr. Carp to come along. There you go, easy as that. I'm gonna get it back out there now, see if we can nab another one. Right, so as you can see, I've managed to have another bite and I will just say, this is the great thing with tiger nuts as hook baits. When carp eat a tiger nut, they don't actually digest it straight away, they chew it and when they pass it out, it's still edible food. So believe it or not, carp are actually used just to finding random tiger nuts. So I've seen a little bit of fizzing out towards the island, um, but rather than make too much sort of disturbance, I've just flicked a pair of tiger nuts out there. Lo and behold, I've got a fish on, but I think it's got into one of my other rods and it's in the weed. So what I'm gonna try and do, put the odds in my favor, is open this bay alarm and jump straight in the boat. I've had a couple of boat battles and the weed seems to, once you get over the top of it, you seem to be able to get the fish out quite, quite easy. I thought it was moving then, but I'm not gonna take any risks. When you're using a boat and you've got a fish on, if you just go very gently, you can actually pull yourself out to the fish. But always have one of these on. No matter how good you are at swimming, things can go wrong. Ah! Having a beast. I've got a feeling the fish is already gone. No. Well, there we go. Here's the result of that boat battle, which was the result of casting a pair of tiger nuts to a showing carp. 26 pound, mega common. And do you know what? It's been a wicked session. I hope you've got something from it, from, from using particles, catching on the surface, and just in general, trying to keep trying things to keep the bobbins moving. I've had a wicked time. A couple of days on the bank, catching wicked carp, having my little princess with me as well. What do you reckon, Emily? There we go, couldn't say it better myself.
So you join me today at a lake called Old Mill. It's owned by South West Lakes Trust. Been here a couple times before, um, so I've been really looking forward to coming back. Um, there's not massive fish in here, but the ones that are are real characters, so I'm really hoping that we'll catch a few. Well, I was just going to tell you why I chose to come over and fish in this area and uh, one of the rods has ripped off. There's plenty of snags in here so I'm just going to concentrate on what I'm doing and uh, try and get this one in the net. Come on. This is not going very well. Come on. Yes. At last. Well, this is turning into a bit of a hectic five minutes. So I've got my foot on a net, which has got fish in, and uh, I've got another fish on this rod, so I'm um, going to have to get uh, the cameraman to go and get my other net for me um, so I can uh, try and get this one in. Oh, well that was stressful, a double take to start the session. The cameraman was telling me to keep rolling um, and I was just saying go and get my net. <laughs> um, but in the end I won the argument and uh, down there is one of the character fish that I was telling you about so can't wait to uh, get out of the water so we can have a proper look at it. Here we are, this is the better one of the double take, just under £20. The common I had was a little bit smaller, but what a way to start the session. This fish is an absolute banger and I can't wait to see if we can catch them more like this. So after the action of today, it was just a case of getting the rods back out on those productive spots. After a good look around the lake this morning, I chose to fish on a small bay to the side of the lake. I actually saw fish at both ends of the lake, but this bay showed most activity with carp continually cruising to the lily pads and back. The bay also provides a far margin full of overhanging trees. It's a great place to put some baits. So I've scattered a good amount of link boilies along the area with a throwing stick, which is a tactic that has worked really well for me and one I'm really confident in. Thankfully, the tactic worked and with the traps reset, I was confident for more bites during the night and at first light, fingers crossed.
one late last night, just into dark. It went quite quiet after then, but um, as you can see, now the sun's come up, we're into another one. Every fish that I've had so far has tried to charge around this corner. So I'm just gonna watch what I'm doing and try and get this one in the net um, before he heads for the snags. Well, as you saw for this one, absolutely ripped off. Um, gave me the right run around, so quite pleased to get him in the net and uh, hopefully we'll have some more. So it didn't take long for the rods to go off again. This one feels like a bit of a better fish than the last one. Um, charged straight out into open water. Oh. Hopefully we'll get this one in the net. All these fish are really using these deep margins. Come on out of there. Yes. Oh, just put my rod back out on the same spot that I've just had this fish that's in the net. And uh, before we had time to do any pictures, the rod's gone off again. This one's another really hard fighting fish. It had me over the snags for a little bit. It was a bit touch and go, but it looks like, hopefully, we will be able to get this one in the net and hopefully I'll have another fish to show you. Come on. Still got loads of energy left. These real deep margins, they just keep going right up until they get in the net. Oh. No, you don't want to go under there. Oh. There's another one crashing out in the back bay. Let's see if I can get this one in. Nice scaly one. Come on this time, in the net. Come on. Does not like that net. Woohoo! There we go, there's another one. Ah. In the tree again. Right, let's get these two sorted. With two more old milk carp safely photographed and returned, plus a bonus fish that came along whilst I was taking care of the first two fish, it was time to get some bait back out on the spots with a scattering of link boilies. I really like these freezer baits. They react in the water, giving an instant reaction, but as a food source bait, once the fish get on it, they just keep coming back for more. Which is certainly the case in this session, where I've had my location right and my spots are rocking, the fish are eager to feed. To help them find the hook bait quickly, I'm using an essential IB wafter on the hair. These hook baits are packed with attraction and I'd have to say they are my absolute fave. I love these hook baits and so do the carp. Okay, so I've had quite a few bites over there in my swim. Um, because of this, I decided to put out quite a bit of bait um, and obviously that's caused quite a bit of disturbance. Um, so I'm using this opportunity to go and do something that I really love doing and that's surface fishing. Um, so we're going to head up to the shallows and we'll go and see what it's about. So I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is seeing a few fish. 
The bad news is they're just taking a few mixes, but they're not feeding in the same way that I was hoping. I'll persevere for a little bit longer and we'll just see what happens. Hopefully we'll get a few going, and maybe a chance of a bite. So after about an hour of trying, we've managed to get a few fish just casually feeding on the top. Not a lot, but just a couple. So hopefully it's given us half a chance that we might be able to get one. Right, I've had enough. It's just not happening. I'm itching to get back to my swim to see if my pre-baiting's paid off. Well, last night turned out to be pretty quiet. I did have um, a common, but I just slipped that one back because I was hoping it was going to be the start of today's action. It's not really panned out like that. If the sun comes out later, I might have another go at surface fishing, but we'll just see what happens. So I've had an amazing session. It's been such a good trip. I really wanted to end with another fish. Today's been pretty tough, so I wasn't sure that it was gonna happen. But just as I was packing up, a rod went off. And uh, what a way to finish with this amazing old mill character. I'm absolutely made up with this fish. I'm gonna get him back and I'm gonna make my way home.
We're down at Linear Fisheries, Brazen Nose 2. We got down here late last night, decided to chuck a couple of singles out, so, you know, I, I was fishing. Um, nothing happened through the night, but I got up early this morning, chucked a couple of solid bags out to the middle, and within minutes, this fella's gone off 22 pound 14, and I'm hoping over the next couple of days, that particular tactic will put me another couple of fish on the bank. That didn't take too long again, literally five minutes probably. Again on a solid bag. Whoa. Yeah, at the minute, I think this is probably the tactic which I'm gonna keep with. Um, if it ever goes quiet, you know, in a couple hours time, if the fish stop biting, you know, if the runs stop, might think about getting some bait out there. But while ever bites are coming, you know, the method's clearly working, you know, and don't, don't change what ain't broken, you know. So I think, this will be the tactic for the time being. Oh, he's proper angry. It's the first one that's definitely stripped a load of line off me like that. It's not your usual banging your head like a small fish either, so hopefully when we get a glimpse of him, he'll be a nice fish. But at the minute, it's proper making my arm ache. Come on. PBA hasn't even had time to melt around the uh, <laughs> around the tail rubber. Come on, you're done now, mate. You're done. Keep coming. Yes. <laughs> well, they're certainly getting bigger. This one weighed in at 24 pound. As soon as he went in the landing there, I got the rod back out on the spot. You're never too sure how long these morning feeding spells are going to last for, so it's important to maximise your time. As I've already mentioned, I'm down at Linear Fisheries and I've just slipped my third fish back of the session, a lovely 25 pound, 15 ounce Miracarp. Now you may have been here yourself, you may have even heard about the complex and I'm sure you have. So the complex has a series of day ticket waters on them and we're currently on Brazenose 2 which has the highest density of population of fish, so there's a lot of carp in here. Now it goes without saying that if you come to this venue, you may need a lot of bait, but one common thing that anglers do is immediately get the spod rod out and start filling it in with bait when there could be other opportunities even quicker for you. So when we arrived this morning, I took solid bags straight out to the centre of the lake to try and nick a few fish straight away. And also, if I got a bite, which I did, I've had a few fish now, it may tell me the sort of distance they are. So when I do decide to put some bait out, I know exactly where to cast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on clipping this spod rod up, make myself a nice little spod mix and see if we can induce some more takes. last of rods to go out this evening on the money ready for the night. I've got a nice spotted area out there earlier. I had fish near enough straight away, literally minutes after casting out. So the fish are definitely out there still. However, with that said, the lake has now got busy, you know. It's a day ticket water, it's Friday evening and lots of people have turned up. It's been a really productive first day. Hopefully when I get this out on the money and then we'll get a few more fish tonight. morning had a little bit of a hectic night last night this one came at first light and it was one of four uh, i lost one as well and had a tent which we won't talk about but they definitely responded well to those solid bags and the spod mix we put out yesterday evening uh, the conditions look dramatically better today We've got overcast low pressure a little bit of drizzle in the sky not so good for filming but i'm hoping it brings a few more bites Well, 
well. I haven't had a bike for a little while now. It's time to put some more spawns back out to the area. What you've got to remember on this particular venue is that the fish are shoal fish. So when they come in, there might be 30, 40 or even 50 fish coming at once. It's quite easy for them to clear your bait out if you haven't got a lot down there. Plus, over the years, they've seen the spawn a lot and the noise of it can sometimes attract them almost like a dinner bell. And obviously when you've got that continuous cloud of bait falling through the water column, it gives them a nice scent trail to follow the bait down where hopefully your hook baits are. So sometimes when it's a little bit slow, if you just put a couple more spots back out to refresh everything, it can induce another take for you. Even though I've been using a mix of hemp and boilies, the pellets have been the real standout bait on this session, just because the admit there's extra few fish at the start of the session on solid bags. So within my solid bags, I've been using spod and PVA pellets. It's a two kilo tub with a mixture of pellets in there, ranging from micro sized pellets up to around four millimeter. This mixture of different sized pellets means that you can create a compact solid bag with no unwanted pockets of air that can affect the accuracy of the cast. As you've seen, I've been using the response pellets in my spod mix. Now these are designed to primarily match the dedicated freezer bait range. They're great for bulking out your spod mix with, and also they leave a great layer of attraction down on the lake bed. The reason I'm using the spod and PVA pellets, because as the name suggests, they're absolutely perfect for fishing inside solid bags. Firstly, the pellets provide me a handful of bait around my hook baits, which also gives me confidence that my rig's not tangled. But best of all, those different sized pellets are leaking off attraction at different times, giving me a maximum attraction around my hook bait for longer periods. That attraction was apparent at the beginning of the session when I was chucking single solid bags out to the centre of the lake. It was drawing the carp down and getting me those first three or four fish. If you're looking to fish solid bags, the spot and PVA pellets are absolutely perfect for the job and everything you need in one tub. And if you're looking to bulk out your boiler feed or maximise the attraction of your spot mix, then the response pellets are a fantastic addition. Since I last spoke to you, I've had a couple more fish, two lovely 20 pounders, but it has gone a little bit quiet at the minute. The lake's extremely busy, you know, you look around, I can't see a spare peg anywhere. I have tried to work the swim as best as possible, so every hour I've been putting a couple of spots out there, trying to ring the dinner bell consistently. Those two bites did come pretty much straight away after spotting out, so the tactic is working and I believe the fish are out there, um, but they're just not really kicked off as of yet. Uh, last night was pretty hectic, you know, they're coming around nine o'clock and I had action all the way through the night. So I'm hoping I've got a decent bit of bait out there again now, put another 20, 30 spawns out there that they get the same reaction tonight and I get a couple more bites through the night. Well, much to my surprise, nothing actually happened last night. Just before dark, I got all three refresh bags out there, spotted over the top, everything went perfect. There was actually fish showing behind the spot, but for some reason, nothing actually happened. Um, I suspect either the fish had moved off into the hours of darkness, or they just stopped feeding. Um, and I, deep down, I, I think it's probably a mixture of the two. However, I'm just gonna keep casting the solid bags out there, 
putting a little bit of attraction down on the bottom and hope that I can snare a couple more fish before I leave. So I've just tied a solid bag up, ready to cast out. And all I've done is if you open the solid bag up, put a little bit of stick mix ground bait down the bottom first. Then I've put my rig in, a couple of scoops of pellets. And I've just lifted the lead up, tapped everything down just to compact it. A few more scoops of pellet over the top, licked and twist the bag, tied it up around the corners. Uh, and yeah, that, that's, my, that's my finished presentation. However, I do do one thing slightly different to most people. All I've done is I've injected some hemp oil into there. All that's going to do is give me a lovely attraction on the bottom, oil slicking up, if the fish are moving above it, hopefully it'll draw them down. So that's the presentation I've been using this session. Let's get it out there and see if we can get one more fish. Well, you literally couldn't write it. We were holding out for one last fish. Everything was already packed down behind us. We just had the rods out. And I remember saying to John, all the bites have come when the sun's been out. And literally, it appeared out of nowhere. A little bit of chop come on the water. It looked really good for a bite. And yeah, literally the left hand rods gave a couple of bleeps and we're like, is it on, is it not on? And yeah, it was on all right. What a fantastic complex linear fisheries is, you know absolutely amazing we've had 13 fish now literally 12 of them have been 20 pounders all except this one which is at 35 pounds i'm absolutely made up well it's time to slip this fella back and hit the road You're joining me on a 48 hour session in Kent at a lovely 40 acre gin clear gravel pit. Lots of thick weed in here, but on top of that are some lovely big carp. Only fished here once before. Got 48 hours out to try and catch one, so let's go and do it. Okay, I'll give you a rundown of my swim. It's a double swim, so I'm able to split my rods and cover more water. And one of the things, it might seem obvious, but when you're fishing these weedy waters, it's imperative to find a nice clear area. And that's what I've done. On the left dam rod, I've found an area that's a gap between two reeds. It's about 15 foot deep and rock hard. On these two rods, I'm fishing out about 25 wraps. 
and there's a hump that comes up. All around it, it's 16 foot and very weedy, and this hump comes up to 11 foot, and I've put two baits on top of that with a good helping of bait. And bait-wise, it's really important to fish something in the weed that isn't just gonna fall through it. That's why I'm choosing not to use things like whole boilies, and I'm crushing them and breaking them up so they're stuck within the weed, and obviously that keeps the fish in the swim for longer. So this is the swim I'm fishing. I think it offers us a really good chance for fish. I've seen a few while we've been chatting, but if them fish do the off, there's every chance I may move, but for now it's looking good. So the afternoon passed by really quietly. I think that was due to the disturbance of me putting in quite a bit of bait. But after a while, a few fish started to show on it and my confidence has risen. About four o'clock, a big lump of weed came in and drifted across both of my lines. So I had to recast them, but that weren't a bad thing. So I got both of the baits back on the spot and they both went down for a nice bang. So I'm full of confidence for the night ahead. I'm hoping that first light's gonna bring a fish. So let's see what happens. Well, last night passed uneventfully, but on a good plus side, that hot sunshine's gone and there's a nice breeze blowing in my face. I've seen a few fish, but I'm seeing more down the other end. It's a bit stitched up down there at the moment, so it don't look like I can move, but if someone moves and I can get on them, I will. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep working this spot because you never know, it, it could come good. Okay, location is everything and I am simply not on them, so it's time for a move. I'm gonna shoot down about 150 yards, find some spots, get some bait mixed up, and before I put it out, we'll have a look at what I'm doing. For most of my fishing, I use the cell, and that is because it's got everything you want from a boilie. It's nutritional, smells lovely, and works all year round. What more could you want from a freezer range bait? I've been using the cell now for the best part of 10 years, and that's probably because it's the bait that I've got the most confidence in. I have used Activate in the hybrid, and most recently the Link, but I always find myself coming back to the cell and that is just purely confidence. It's a bait I never have to question. And not only that, the time of year. Some baits you have to you know, use through the summer when the water's warmer, but with the cell, it fishes throughout the year, which makes it a brilliant bait to be baiting with continuously. My confidence in the cell stems from the results I've had in the last few years. It's been unbelievable. Any water I've took it to, I've instantly started to catch. And when you have that amount of confidence in a bait, it totally takes that out of the equation. You don't need to think about it. I can get on with things like location, watercraft, and finding features. And that is probably why it's my go-to bait. So if you're new to carp fishing, or you're simply stuck in a rut where you're questioning your bait, get on the cell. You won't ever question bait again, I promise you that. There's so many ways to fish a boilie and so many types of ways to fish for a carp. If I'm fishing a lake where there's, you know, a lot of nuisance fish, I'll be fishing solid 15, 18 mil boilies, not breaking them up, because I don't want to be attracting in all the roach and the bream and things like that. 
but say I'm in a lake where it's predominantly carp and I want to attract them in, I'll start to cut and crush them baits and fill water columns because I know that's the only species I'm pulling in. So don't just limit yourself to chucking boilies straight in a lake. Don't be afraid to crush them, mix them with hemp and sweet corn and make a really good attractive area. And what's more, if you really want to boost that attraction, there's cell liquids that you can add to the mix. And when you start doing things like spotting them out, they'll entirely take over a water column, pulling the fish into your area. So on this session, like most of my sessions, I'm using the cell. There's always something about the evenings when you're carp fishing that makes you, you know, just glad to be at the lake. But this is my second swim on my second night. Things are looking good. I see a fish earlier over my left hand rod. The lake is absolutely packed out at the moment. There's a lot of people here, but there hasn't been one take, so it's not just me struggling. You know, with the activity in front of me, fingers crossed something could happen tonight. Well, that was a quiet 48 hours. I ended up with one 10 pound common last night. There was two fish caught out of the lake, so I didn't do too bad, but I've learned a lot more and know a lot more than what I did when I first turned up. Carp fishing tricky waters, it's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. Every time you're here, you get to learn a little bit more and we'll be back because I won't be beat. So we'll see you down here again. Right, here we are, back again in Kent. I said last time I wouldn't be defeated. I've got another 48 hours in front of me. Things are very different this time. We're mid-November. There's barely any leaves left on the trees, but to be fair, it is quite mild. So hopefully the calf are up for one more month before the cold really sets in. Well, I got down this morning and as always, I had a good look round. I was probably looking for an hour. Initially, I was attracted to the swim opposite me, but I saw a fish showing it was more this side, which drew me to this side. The tactics are quite simple. I'm fishing long range, 31 to 32 wraps, and I'm crushing up all my bait. And there's a reason I'm crushing my bait. There's a lot of bird life on this lake, a lot of activity. And if I'm putting out solid boilies, there's probably a hundred coots, they're going to clear them in no time whatsoever. So what I've done, I've crushed the cell down to an absolute dust, added a little bit of response pellet and a little bit of sweet corn, just for a bit of brightness. So if them uh, coots do get quite a bit of the bait, there's always going to be some dust remaining on the bottom, attracting the fishing. Over top of that, I've fished two pop-ups, both IBs and an IB wafter. So, I'm feeling pretty confident. I've now seen four or five fish in front of me. We now just need a bit of luck. Well, the cameraman was just filming me spotting and uh, the left hand rod's gone as we're, as we're spawning over the top of it. And uh, it's weeded me up once already. So I'm gonna try and concentrate playing this in and hopefully we'll have something to show you.
Hopefully, there's a fish there. Yes. Oh, it was in my mouth. <laughs> big ball of weed, and there's a lovely big mirror in the bottom of it. Yes. Well, overused word in carp fishing, I'm blown away. Me and John come down and we said, wouldn't it be nice to get a good 20 or something? And I, I jokingly said, no, let's have a 40. And uh, here she is, 40 pounds, seven ounces. <sighs> Mega. <laughs> there you go. What I joined this lake for. Kent 40, and here she is. Very happy Dave. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Off you go. <sighs> I don't believe it. Didn't expect that. Get in. Well, it's the morning after, still buzzing about catching that fish yesterday, but really did expect some more action last night. Um, maybe it is that that dusk time is gonna be the bite time. I heard a couple of fish and they were definitely out over the spots last night, so I was surprised this morning when the light came up that we hadn't had nothing. But reflecting back to the last session, you know, like I think that was a couple of months ago, we came over, we did 48 hours, and uh, fished really hard despite effort, nothing come of it, one little common. And uh, we could have gone off, we could have filmed somewhere a lot easier and done this somewhere else. But I wanted to come back and I wanted to show you that if you drive hard, you know, sometimes big carp fishing, success is built on failure. You're going to blank when you're fishing for big carp. But if you keep going, it will come good. And it's come good this session because you, you don't see many fish like that. I've caught, I've caught a lot of carp, but them ones like that, in that condition, that age, they're just pucker. Rare fish, and um, it's been worth it taking the risk, you know, of not going to a run's water and coming here. Thank God we did. spoke earlier about the importance of, you know, just keep pushing free, keep going, making sure everything's right, even down to the accuracy of where you're putting your bait. Hit that clip, get it nice and accurate, get your location right, make sure your hooks are nice and sharp, you're using the right rig in the right area, and most of all, a decent bait. The basics is what's most important. If you think about carp fishing, it's made up of 1%. And when you get to 10%, you catch a fish. Hook, 1%. Right bait, 2%. Right distance, 3%. And it all builds up. And when you get it right, you get a take. Without overcomplicating it, it's just the basics. Get the basics right, and then just keep working. Yesterday, I had a bite around four o'clock. So today, I'm baiting up at midday so that I'm, if that is the bite time on this lake, I don't want to be baiting up during the bite time and spooking them off the swim. So I've chose to bait up at midday so that hopefully when they turn up this evening, the swim's prepped, ready, and there's a chance for another bite. It's a good job that I'm still buzzing about the fish I caught yesterday, because today has been a bit of a nightmare. Drifting weed has forced me to cast four or five more times than I'd want to. Even in the bite time, I set out to reposition rods.
But as the night draws in, I've got three rods out on the spot and I'm feeling really confident. There's a bit of a chill in the air and winter is definitely here. But he's hoping we get one more fish. Well, as this 48 hour session comes to an end, would you believe probably the best weather of the sessions come in? It's overcast, warm, nice wind, but you know, you can't fish forever. We've all got to go home at some point. Still blown away with that 40 pounder. And if you think, I always say to people, one thing I never question is my bait. And in the last 12 months, I've had fish over 40 pound from five different waters. And if that ain't proof, I don't know what is. I come down here and we've had a fish, a 40 pounder for the camera. Couldn't be happier. I've really got the taste for this place now. I'm going to come back, fish a bit more through the winter. It'll probably be colder, but you've just got to stick at it and the results will come.